Psyche Truth. Life. Wisdom. Hi, I'm Katherine Elizabeth. Welcome back to day three of my 10-day flexibility challenge. As promised, we're going to delve a little bit deeper today into your back flexibility, and I'll be helping you ease into the splits for the first time. Let's get started. Today we're going to start on the floor. Go ahead and take your plank position on your hands. Now instead of a push-up, we're going to be doing back curls. So we're going to start by just finding our upper back and flexing it back and forth. So we're not really doing a push-up at all because our elbows are staying stationary. Instead, we're retracting our shoulder blades and pushing the floor away to access our upper spine. Now you do want to still incorporate the fundamentals of holding a plank, that is keeping your hips down, keeping a strong belly, and keeping your neck long and free. If this is very difficult for you to isolate at the moment, Go ahead and take the plank down to your knees, but continue to work through your upper back. One more here, and go ahead and relax. Now we're going to return to our plank. Same idea, this time we can go down to our elbows. Make sure your elbows are stacked right underneath your shoulders. Sink the hips down low. We're gonna bring our knees to our nose, starting with the left leg. In and back to center. In, back to center. Exhale in, inhale back. Get as close to your nose as possible. One more here. And switch sides. Fight to keep your hips as low to the ground as you can. Exhale. And one more. And release. So our warm up is a little bit more rigorous today and that's because I want there to be plenty of time for us to ease into our splits safely and fully warmed up. So let's go to our plank side plank this time. Place either your elbow or your hand right under your shoulder. Stack your feet and lift the hip up high away from the floor. You can rest your left arm on your side or you can follow your gaze up to your palm as you extend it to the ceiling. Don't forget to breathe. Just focus all of your energy on keeping your hips stacked perpendicular to the floor and keeping that right hip up away from the floor. Go ahead and switch sides. Stack that elbow right under the shoulder. Lift the left hip from the floor. Rest your arm or extend it towards the ceiling and have your gaze follow. Keep breathing. And return to center. Now I want you to take that upper back strength with you as we go right into our camel pose. So go ahead and put your knees hip width distance apart. Take your thumb, put it on the outside edge of your foot on both sides. Lean back, look back, drive your hips forward and really let the front of your hips stretch, pushing through with your glutes and really aiming to look at the floor behind you. You can do it in cycles of pushing forward and releasing slightly. Pushing forward, 
and releasing slightly. One more time, pushing forward, releasing. Go ahead and place the palm of one hand on the small of your back to help you up safely. And that's our camel pose. Go ahead and stick one foot out. Let's start with the right. Foot is flexed. Left hip is right over your left knee, pulling your right hip back so your hips are in line. And we're gonna do our chest to our knee on an exhale. And you can see that when I first start to stretch and I'm not quite warm yet, I do take it sort of in slow pulses. I don't make myself hold it there immediately. I like to do exhale, raise a little bit on the inhale, and just go a little bit deeper each time on each exhale. <sighs> now this stretch will be most effective if you don't curl your body in. You're not really just aiming your head towards your leg, you're aiming your chest. So remember to have an open chest, heart to the knee, and this time hold. Remember to pull that right hip back away from your knee. Meanwhile, your right heel pulls forward. So you're really just trying to make your leg as long as it possibly can. And go ahead and switch sides. Pulling the right hip over the left, or the right knee. Pulling the left hip back. Big inhale. Exhale, chest toward the knee. Again, you can pulse it slowly. To pull my hip back a little bit. After a few serene breaths, go ahead and take it deeper and hold. Good. Now we're gonna start accessing that lower back again and engaging the glutes. It's going to help everything be a little bit more stable, especially in those standing poses. So go ahead and take a seat back. We're gonna start with some glute bridges. So we're lying down. Position your feet about hip width distance apart. And we're gonna raise our hips one vertebra at a time, starting with the tailbone. On an exhale, exhale through the spine until there's one long line from your shoulders to your knees. And lower back down, starting with the top of your spine. Really focus especially on getting every vertebra of the lower back making contact with the mat. Up again on an exhale. Drawing the belly button in towards the spine. Getting to the full height of your hips. One long line from the shoulders to the knees. And we're just gonna hold it here. Press your heels in towards the mat. Feel the contraction in your glutes and your hamstrings and the stretch in the front of your hips. And roll it down. We're gonna do that one more time. Really focus on keeping your legs parallel. Make sure they're not rolling in or out. On an exhale, up we go. This is preparation both for our splits and our back bend. Pressing through the heels. Now for the last few seconds, I want you to drive your hips as far as they will go while pushing into the floor with your heels. 
Stretch those hips and let it go slowly rolling down. Now from this position, we're ready to attempt our baby back bend. So we're not pushing up into a full arc quite yet. Instead, we're just getting used to what it's like to use our arms from this position. So you can widen your legs if it's a little bit more comfortable. You're placing the palms of your hand right behind your shoulders, as close, as, as close to your shoulders as you can reach. Elbows should be parallel. Try not to have them flare out here. Should be parallel to each other. Now walk your feet up to your glutes. And from here, just try to push up from the back, keeping your elbows together, just for a couple seconds at a time. Again, on an exhale, we push up and down. Up and down. So now we're finally ready to attempt a back bend. Now this is actually a lot easier if you do it all in one piece. There's a tendency at first to wanna to just push through the arms first and then the legs, but it's really easier if you can do it all at once. So you're gonna position your hands right behind your shoulders, palms facing down, your elbows are facing up and they're parallel. Try not to have them flare out. Keep them nice and strong and parallel with the rest of your body. Now you wanna walk your feet close to your hips, as close as you can. And in fact, you can start to raise your hips a little bit. But like I said, it's easier to do this all in one piece. So in one movement, we're gonna push our heels through the mat, just like we were doing with our, uh, our glute bridges. And we're gonna push the floor away through our hands. Now, ideally you should get to a t the top of your uh, back bend by pushing all the way through your arms until they're almost straight. If you can do that now, go for it. Otherwise, see if you can just tap the top of your head onto the mat and then return right back down to the starting position. So that would look like this. All at once, hands and feet, push through, tap, and back down. Now I actively did a little bit of a bounce, but if you want to do just a nice easy rest on the top of your head, go for it. Let's do that one more time. So in one piece, push up, rest, and back down. Now you can see my elbows are flaring out a little bit. That might happen at first, but let's try one more time, really focusing on staying parallel with our, with our arms. So just take a nice deep breath. Go forward with excitement, not fear. We're moving forward, we're making progress. Last time for the baby bridge, inhale. Push through both. Keep the arms parallel and return to center. Good job. I'm going to just demonstrate the full bridge and you're welcome to attempt it with me if the baby bridges were simple enough. So go ahead and bring your palms back to the position, slightly outside of your shoulders, but parallel. All in one piece, we're gonna push to our full bridge. This means nice arched, but long arms and long legs. Hips up to the sky. Ready? One, two, three, up you go. And you can hold it as long as you can, even if that's just half a second, but bring it down safely and with control. Now I say that lightly, but it does take practice, so feel free to watch this video and you know over and over until this starts to be in your body and it becomes a little bit easier. So we'll just take one final stretch before trying our splits. And I want you to just visualize yourself doing them perfectly as we stretch. So let's take a pigeon pose. That's your right knee in front of your navel. Tuck your right arch, the right arch of your foot into your left hip here, and try to drive your right hip down, keeping your left foot straight behind you. 
and just breathe here. Now I'm wearing this really awesome leotard that was given to me by Cahoots and Move and Easy Dancewear. And it's a Degas painting, it's a classic. It has these lovely graceful ballerinas on it. And I always think it's very funny that to achieve that level of grace and beauty, we often have to do things that look not so graceful, like the bear crawls. But just rest assured that everything we're doing today is getting you one step closer to that ease and that grace that we're all striving for. Let's go ahead and switch sides. We're almost there. Right hip to the left arch of the foot. Drop the left hip. Gaze straight ahead if it helps you. Okay. Bring your right foot back in front. You can start just like we did the hamstring stretch. Heel flexed ahead, left behind. I'm gonna do it on the yoga mat, but you might find it easier to do it, the splits on something a little bit more slippery, something that eases the transition from this position to the full splits. Okay, so now we're gonna go into our splits. The main thing I want you to think about is splitting evenly on both legs and putting equal weight on each leg. So if you find that your hamstring is more flexible than your back uh, quad and your, your back hip flexor, this might be your split already. But I challenge you to find the center of your weight between both legs. And you might not go as low to the ground, but focus on working correctly putting both hips in line and pushing down with equal weight and upper body should be facing straight ahead over your front foot now sometimes I do lean just a little bit on my back hip so that's a trouble spot for me I sort of just relax my front foot and I lean on that back hip and I roll back to the center. Again, I'm going to lean, just walk my hands, relaxed right leg and roll back to the center. So depending on what sport or activity you're doing, uh, that's going to determine what direction your back knee is facing. Um, for some things like dance, uh, you'll be asked to turn your knee towards the wall, um, towards the side, whereas other activities like you know martial arts or cheerleading, you might be asked to face your knee towards the ground. Both are perfectly valid, but they do stretch different muscles. So I recommend practicing it both ways. We're just gonna stay here a little bit longer. All right, let's give it a go to the other side. So just push gently with your arms to allow your legs to come back to center. And we'll start the same way. Left foot out. Hips are even, foot is flexed. And now you can center your weight over your hands Before going down too low, make sure that equal weight is on both legs, and we slide down. And I'm gonna walk my hands to the side here. Just relax my left leg. Just get a little bit more of a stretch in that right hip. And walking back over, extending. One more time, walking back over. You can even bring this all the way down to your elbows. I find that really helpful sometimes. The most important thing is to breathe and really visualize with each breath, visualize the oxygen going through your bloodstream, going through all the fibers of your muscles. Just imagine that you are increasing your flexibility. You are. Ah. 
again, center your body. Both shoulders should be facing straight in front. And I think of pointing each toe to opposite ends. So my front toe is really striving to hit that wall in front of me while my back foot is really striving for the back wall. And just hold it as long as you can. Stretch just a little bit more and gently push back to center. Well, congratulations, you've made it to the end of day three. We've attempted our splits and our back bend for the first time. And on day four, we're just gonna take that a little bit further and hopefully I'll be able to do those movements with a little bit more ease and a little bit more grace. So have a lovely day and I will see you tomorrow. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so that you can join me for day four and favorite this video so that you can come back to it and practice anything that was a little bit more difficult. Uh, but until next time, have a great day and I will see you on day four.